Hello everybody, Marco Cipetta from Hot Hardware behind the camera at CES 2026 and we are with Intel. We have the infamous Tom Tap Peterson infamous. and my compatriot <laughs> Dave Altavilla here. I will be behind the camera jumping in Thanks, when Marco. I can, but we have some really cool information on Panther Lake and the Intel Core, Core Ultra 3 series and Tom is going to blow you away with some of this data. <laughs> yeah, we got some wow, keep expectations data, low, lower, lower. <laughs> Um, well, it's exciting, Dave. Great to see you, Marco. Love you, guys. Thanks for coming out. Uh, we just launched the Intel Core Ultra Series 3, which is Panther Lake, and it is, it's actually a really, really great part, so we're really excited. You can see our summary. 27-hour battery life, which is crazy. 60% faster gen-on-gen -gen CPU performance. But what I'm super excited about is 77% faster graphics gen-on-gen, -gen. and that's, that's kind of crazy. The headline for me is that Panther Lake is now a really great gaming platform for mobile form factors, and it's actually running at about the same performance level of what you usually get from entry-level discrete from a couple generations back. So we're, we're at about a 40-50 now, which is pretty exciting. That is exciting. So question. Yes, sir. Bold claims. I know. How did you get to 77% faster? Well, obviously we're built on a new technology, so we're getting a little <coughs> uplift from technology, and we're larger. So okay. we're up to a 12XC configuration now, which okay. is more area dedicated to graphics than we've ever done before. Okay, and this is XC3? XC3, XC, XC3 XC3, exactly right, yeah. Okay, and Battle Mage? It Can is still that? Battle Mage. So why is XC3 Battle Mage? Yeah. It's because a lot of people are used to the Battle Mage name, yep. and we didn't want to change things up uh, because the performance levels are still kind of in the same range between XC3 and XC2. Okay. There's lots of architectural improvements that we ran through at ITT, okay. but at the end of the day, Battle Mage is well understood and well known, so that's why we're excited. I'll tell you about our new name for Battle Mage. Awesome. Excellent. All right. And, and actually, before we move on, just a quick question. Yes, sir. Now, with Panther Lake, you guys have a 4 XE 3 core and this big 12 core. Yes. 12 core, yeah. How do you come to that decision to have have such a, a wide disparity between the two different that's models. a great question uh, that's a great question Dave the, the, the point is that we have multiple different market segments that we go after some are paired with a discrete GPU typically and when you're paired with a discrete GPU you don't want to spend a lot of money on an integrated graphics device that you're not going to use that's why you'll see the larger PCI Express configurations paired with smaller XE core configurations ah. right it's just it's like it's the one that's targeted towards discrete graphics that's why you see both 4 and 12 now the 12 is targeted at you know that's the graphics it's a single chip solution yep. low power high performance but there's you know we love all graphics awesome thank you so much especially yeah. Tom he loves all I love all graphics yeah <laughs> great well let's uh, let's go on the next slide okay. so here we are uh, this is on the CPU side. You can see we're built for efficiency. We're 40% lower power at similar poor. So this is performance and yep. this is power. And you can see kind of the Core Ultra Series 3 is about 40% lower power at similar performance. It's pretty cool. And you got an HX370 there. This is just showing the other guys for reference. Okay. Which is lower performance and higher power. Okay. This is actually looking at it the other way. If you're trying to say from a CPU's perspective, multi-core performance, we are higher, higher performance at the same power or higher performance at similar power. Lots of different ways to slice it. That's why we put all these curves on here. For so 60% more performance at similar power. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That's it's a pretty impressive. And let's stop real quick. Uh, at the SOC is multiple tiles, yep, yep. fabbed in different different places. technologies, different vendors. So eighteen A on the on the CPU SO uh, chip, yep. CPU uh, yep. island. Uh, what about graphics? Ooh, I don't know if we're talking about the specific okay. technology. I I I believe I'm not sure. Okay, let me check on that. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, we don't want to get in trouble. Oh, you can. What did we say? Do you know? TSMC, and then Intel 3 for the small... TSMC. So it's a TSMC variant. Okay. Kind of, there you go. Got it. Yeah. All right. So let's go on. Um, and this, of course, is the big part for me. We introduced our new ARC B390, which is our Panther Lake XC3 graphics. Okay. So that's huge, right? And it's the biggest configuration GPU we've ever built for integrated. It's 12 XC cores, 120 tops. It's got 12 ray tracing units and 96 XMX engines. So it's built to score. Score big. It's slam dunking. <laughs> All right. Now, Fair and enough. not just graphics, big L2 cache and 96 XMX engine, so AI workloads too. AI, wor AI workloads are going to do great. Um, it is actually our fastest uh, AI engine that we've ever deployed on client, which, by the way, Marco reminds me, did you get, catch the number that we threw out today? Four zettabytes, uh, yes. zettaops. 
four wow. zeta ops. Zeta ops. A billion trillion. That's a lot. So of it's ops. a billion trillion ops. Four billion trillion ops. <laughs> and what that means is that we've got an installed base of AI PCs enabled between Meteor Lake and Lunar Lake now that represents a four zeta up opportunity. Uh -huh. Right, so you get that you get that installed base, and that's what drives the software infrastructure. Yeah, lots of opportunity. Yeah, very cool. Twelve ray tracing units. Um, it, it, what happens in terms of the ray tracing engine? What, what kind of performance lift do we get there? Well, there's, it's moderate. You know, there's multiple different techniques. The caches are slightly larger. We're doing slightly different algorithms. Okay, but they're very similar performance as the prior generation. Okay, yeah, got it. Okay, so as we, as we look through here, again, 77% faster graphics, which is cool, and 53% faster AI, bigger caches, more memory, more XMX units. But this is what we all care about. It's all about performance, 76% faster. You know, I'm a data guy, so just a ton of games. Yeah. And this is showing you with uh, 2x XESS turned on, so it's doing 2x super sampling. Uh, and this is actually showing you a 45 watt versus a 25 watt as well. So it's really doing well. This is a 2x up sampling across multiple different titles. And this is showing, I think, versus Lunar Lake. And you can actually get Wukong at 44 frames per second. <laughs> Very cool, right? Which, 2x super sampling on, on an integrated device. Which is a GPU crusher game. Yeah, yeah not bad. It. This is uh, how we stack up against competition. This is the AMD HX370 running at 53 watts sustained versus our 45 watts. This is what we could find as the highest skew for their devices. And we're sort of you know, doing, doing well across the board, 73% faster. This is also doing 2x upscaling XCSS versus FSR. Okay. Looks pretty good. Uh, yeah, another way to look at it is turn all that stuff up and talk about native rendering. So native rendering, we're about 82% faster than our, pro our closest competition. And then lastly, you can say if, you, if you're trying to run Qualcomm gaming, which I, I don't know if you would do that normally, but I've, if you wanted I've to. I've done it a little bit. Okay, you have lots that didn't work for us, and we're about 2.6x the performance of Qualcomm. Wow. So that's a pretty dominant perspective. Can I ask a quick question? Yes, sir. On per with, with the 12xe part, you may not be able to tell us. Um, could we expect 12XE parts to be, say, in handheld gaming devices? I would, yeah. You would. So I would. that advantage over uh, AMD is, is huge for handheld gaming. Yeah, device. I mean, if you're thinking about handheld gaming, for me, handheld gaming is a growing segment, and Dan talked about it a little bit today, where we're nesting more in ecosystem for handheld gaming. Yeah. Um, and I think it's an, it's an opportunity for us to learn and grow, but the device is perfect for that segment. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah this is a, a fun one. I mentioned that we are at the performance level right now of around a 4050 laptop. This was launched in CES about three years ago, and so our 390 at 45 watts is a, a, you know, trading blows, I'd say it's about 10% faster on average than a 4050 laptop at 60 watts. So this is 1080p gaming, high, high performance mm -hmm. or high uh, visual uh, this quality? Is high visual quality <coughs> with 2x upsampling again, so that's XCSS versus DLSS. Okay. Yeah. In terms wow. of feature support, though, you actually exceed a 4050 because you have multi-frame gen, you have some other stuff. We do, we yeah. do. Uh, and we're going to support multi-frame gen across our entire ARC family as far as we can. Right now, I think it's starting off with Battle Mage series, and then later on, we'll look at others. Gotcha. All right, so we talked about M uh, XCF I'm sorry, XCSS3. Mm -hmm. This is multi-frame gen. It works. We're the first ones with uh, multi-frame gen on integrated. That's pretty cool. That is cool. And it actually is a very good match for integrated performance. You'll see, yeah. you know, the uplift here. This is Cyberpunk 27.7 running on integrated graphics. You're getting things like 85 frames per second with 2x with multi-frame generation up to 147. I don't like to show these numbers as like standalone performance numbers. So we have our raster numbers here, and we call these frames smoothing frames, mm -hmm. right? So the idea is that you get smoother experiences by turning on uh, frame gen. What well, class of machines? So this is an, uh, a Core Ultra um, uh, X9 388H. Mm -hmm. What, cl what, what class of machine should we envision that in? Like a 16 inch? Oh, they're going to be in lots of different laptops. Inch. Like you can look at these guys here. These are going to be beautiful, right? Okay. We'll these show you in a minute. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at some thin and light yeah, 16 inch. Yeah, thin and light 16 inch. They've got okay. great displays. Okay. I think the, the, the idea of uh, gaming on a laptop is with Panther Lake really changing from it's got to be big and bulky or it's got to be low performance. Now it's going to be high performance and thin and light. Love it. Uh, lots of other performance data, Battlefield 6. I love this one, Cyberpunk versus DLSS. You know, this is kind of an NVIDIA title. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're doing really, really well. Jeez. Uh, we've got a do does not run because I think right now 4050 does not support MFG. MFG. Yeah. So question on the multi-frame gen yes. and mitigating the latency. We talked a little bit about uh, that before yeah. we started the camera here. 
tell, tell the folks a little bit about what you can as much as you sure. can. Uh, how so you, how are you going to help, it's help a that real, situation out? It's a real problem, right? When, yeah. when we are generating frames, we're pushing the user a little bit further away from the time they did an action until the time they see something on the screen yeah. because you're buffering up these extra frames, right? So um, the way to fix that is to break down the feeling into two different parts. There's latency for when you click and you're like trying to shoot something. I call that click to photon latency. Yeah. There's not much that can be done there. But the okay. good news is on click to photon latency, you're mostly already used to some kind of gun animation or some kind of things. It's usually hundreds of milliseconds after you click before something really happens. Okay. So contrast that with you moved your, your view and the screen is moving around or you're shifting, that view change needs to be as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. So the good news is on view change latency, there are lots of different techniques that can be applied to make that feel less painful. Okay. Right, And it, it has everything to do with being able to kind of estimate where would a view be uh, if we if we kind of go back in time, so Got there's it. lots of lots of new ideas and technologies. It's an active area of research, but we do know it needs a solution. Okay, all right. Yeah, all right. and there are ideas. They're really good ideas. Sounds like the quantum. I'm realm pretty. I'm pretty. I'm pretty <laughs> excited. Going back in time. This is actually an important part. I'm just. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna just drive this point home. Lots of gamers in the community that have negative sentiment towards AI generated frames think this is an unsolvable problem. But it really isn't. There is active research being done. Absolutely. And, and maybe not all of it's going to go away, but there will be changes in potential. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can think of it, we're not the first people that, that have dealt with this problem, right? right? A headset is, is, the, is the like poster child. For sure. you, you have to have low latency as you're moving Bluetooth. your head around. Yeah. yeah. And, and they've been working through different techniques for years on how to make those headsets feel more responsive. Yeah. So there's lots and lots of work. There's lots of work to be done. But I, I, you know, there's some pretty, pretty good ideas. A little bit more midnight. Oil yeah, burning for yeah, you get, to get, back that in done. get back in your cube. Get to yeah, it work, Tom. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Yeah. All right, so Thank I think you. that concludes most of what we have. We got some handhelds coming out. I think Dan talked about 2026. You'll see a lot of handheld initiatives from us, but yeah, cool. maybe show All you right. around. Awesome. Little, yeah, little and we, we, we'll be talking with Dan in another video, so stay tuned. Nice. To the I'm excited to see what that's that. Tap has some more cool stuff to show us, so we're going to follow him around the room. Okay, for a come with me. This Let's is, uh, by the way, what are we calling this? This is our ARC. It's our ARC zone. ARC, it's the Intel ARC zone. zone. We're in the zone, and you guys baby. are actually here a day early, so we're still setting shit up. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> okay. Setting what up? Huh? <laughs> uh, we're still setting stuff up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a demo that's showing you uh, AMD and Qualcomm and the Core Ultra Series 3, and it's just going to, this is where we're going to show you three games running the same game, different power levels, We've got little power monitors on here, and obviously we're going to be showing uh, much better performance at much lower power. Gotcha. That's easy. This one is Battlefield 6, and it's showing, I think it's showing multi-frame gen. Uh, this is live, actually, and we've got PresentMon running up here. This is a tool that Intel makes. PresentMon is like the piece of code that uh, measures performance for graphics, and it's embedded in most major uh, performance tools, including FrameView from NVIDIA and uh, CapFrameX, if you like that, and a bunch of others. So this is the, the tool of reference, and I've added this thing here called Animation Error, and that I'll be talking about in this session tomorrow. It's just a, a better way to think about how smooth this something and it's a little technical Steve uh, Burke did a good article on it I, I I'm, I'm excited to see it's starting to get some traction but now it's in our tools and you can graph and you start getting a we want a lot of feedback on this thing but the cool part is here we are running Battlefield 6 on a portable device and you can see our frame rates are natively 94 frames per second and with frame gen on uh, up to 170 so that's another feature of uh, present mon it's going to show you real frames and generated frames separately and now with this new data point, it's also going to give you a measurable metric on animation error. Yeah. So not just a percentage, uh, you know, frame time percentage, an actual quantifiable number of animation error. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah. I think it's going to take some time for all of us sure. to figure out what does this mean. But I feel like the science is pretty clear. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, there, there's not a lot of question about what is the source of stutter? What, is, what, do you, what are you looking at when things don't look good? And this is just our first attempt at a metric to capture that. Gotcha. Very cool. Great. And by the way, I just picked that laptop up. That's a 14-inch machine, and it weighed, I mean, it's, it's maybe three pounds, three and a half That's pounds. That's cool, right? 
Very and it looks good. Is that an OLED panel? What is that? It is indeed an OLED panel. Nice. Yeah. 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 These old eyes can still see. <laughs> it's a good-looking <laughs> machine. Yeah. yeah, very sexy. Excellent. Okay, and I think uh, this is going to be dying light. Is that yeah. right? We just wanted to show showcase the arc across the entire platform. You know, we have the Lunar Lake, previous generation Lunar Lake, that's also uh, running the Clear Obscure Expe Expedition 33 game. Yeah. With frame gen on, you, you can see without it on, it's like 30s, high 30s. Yep. And when you turn on frame gen, Apply, oops, apply settings, you're in a much more comfortable like 80, 100 plus FPS. Yeah. Yeah. Believe it or not, like I played this game lately. And it makes a huge difference. Latency. There, there was a, when we did ITT, there was That's like, awesome. there were tons of questions about is frame gen applicable to integrated? Does it make sense? And I was making an argument that says if you have a lower frame rate, you can it's the actually, poster child yeah, for it's it. the poster child. Yeah. Um, and I, I feel like it's, as now people are getting it in their hands, there's a lot more acceptance of, of what it feels like. It's not real frames, nobody's claiming that. Yeah. It's just, it's smoothing frames that helps you, improves your experience. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. This one's up to four axis, what's that much more heavy scene. Oh. In some scenes. <laughs> a little on the gory side there. Four axis. Okay, so yeah. you've got, you've got, uh, this is the native render, mm -hmm. and this is the generated frame total. Oh, I wow. See. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. Pushing. I think that's everything we've got going on here. Tomorrow I'll be up front making, making stuff up, talking about animation there. <laughs> and uh, hopefully press will enjoy their playing on the devices. Look at these guys. Beautiful left. <laughs> Look at this. Sexy. Sneak peek. Sexy. Sneak peek. Uh, Sexy. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Hey, Tom Peterson, thanks so much for your time today. Right, I appreciate you, it. Absolutely. Thanks for coming, Marco. Always, come here. Oh, come here. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> you're the camera guy. Well, Happy New Year, Tom. We're actually, we're really looking forward to Panther Lake between all of the disclosures in Intel Tech Tour and now getting to see stuff in action. I think you guys really got something here. Thanks, man. Yep. Folks, make sure you hit like and subscribe. Thumb up the, uh, so you get notified when we get more stuff on the channel. And thanks for stopping by. <laughs>